Hello, and welcome back to the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. Donna, you're a guest today on our podcast, and we couldn't be happier. How are you? I'm great, Melissa. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. I'm so excited. Thank you again. Oh, I'm thrilled too. The first time we spoke, we just connected immediately, and I think we're going to have a great conversation. I do too. So Donna, you're coming in all the way from Texas, yes? I am. I live in San Antonio. Perfect. So right here in Illinois, I live in central Illinois and recording this podcast and it's a wet, chilly out today. I mean, it's very humid, cold, so it just grabs you when you walk outside. What's it like where you are? Well, yesterday was gorgeous, but today it's been raining, but it's still it's supposed to be 76 today. <laughs> oh, good for you. Soak it in and send some north, would you? I know, right? <laughs> so Donna, you are a real estate agent, a very successful real estate agent. You're an entrepreneur. You're an author. You have so many things that you have conquered in this world. You have a black belt in Taekwondo. Is there anything you can't do? Oh, you are so kind. Oh my goodness. You know, so for so many years, I, I didn't think I could do anything. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's that mindset. Right. Um, it's just um, growing up. Are, are you OK if I get into my story? To that was going to be my next question. So jump right in. Tell us how it started. <laughs> because, you know, for so long, I really had no idea what I could accomplish. And mm -hmm. growing up in, in Alabama, that's where I grew up. I don't tell too many people that. No, I'm kidding. But I mean, <laughs> I actually from from Colorado. I mean, from Den, uh, from San. Shoot, I can't even talk. From um, from Alabama, I moved to to Colorado, and then I moved from Colorado to San Antonio. And um, so it, it's interesting because you don't know what you can do until you actually just start trying to figure it out. And growing up, my so my story um, is growing up, we were really, really poor. Um, we lived in the projects we lived in. Well, we never knew where we were going to live. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so luckily we were never homeless. I mean, thank, thank God. Right. Mm -hmm. But we, uh, really, um, so I have three sisters and, um, my grandmother raised me and my sisters and she also raised my aunts, three kids as well while my mother and my aunt worked, um, neither one of them um, actually made very much money. And so we grew up really, really poor. Um, most, most every night growing up until I became 16 and could start working and actually making some money and contributing, um, we went to bed hungry. And mm -hmm. the only, I feel like the only way that us kids survived was because we got free breakfast and free lunch at school. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't know how my grandmother survived. I, I honestly don't because she had almost nothing every day. And um, it, it was really hard. Um, but, you know, when you're in that situation, it was it was kind of it was really scary all the time um, because you didn't know what to expect. You know, we, we didn't have food. I never had until I, I talk about my book in my book. I talk about when I was 18, I finally had some money. I'd been working for two years, right? I finally had some money and I was going to go buy some clothes for the first time. I had never had a new pair of clothes, a new set of clothes in my life until that point. Right. And wow. I went to the store and I didn't know how to buy clothes. I had never been in that situation. You know, growing up, if you don't have food, you certainly don't have any new clothes, right? Sure. So, I had never been in that situation. And I was like, I remember it was interesting because as I was writing my book, I didn't even remember that story. And mm -hmm. then, cause I think you push a lot of those negative things, you know, out of your yeah. mind that you For don't sure. want to think about. 
<laughs> and I, and when that story came, I just was like, oh my gosh, right? How yeah. far that I have come from that, from that, just, I, I mean, you know, growing up like that, you have no self-confidence. At least I didn't. I had no self-confidence and I don't think any of my sisters or, or my uh, cousins had any self-confidence um, because we were made fun of as kids, right? We were made fun of by the other kids. Um, we, uh, well, even adults kind of made fun of us, you know, whenever you'd go into a store or into like, we'd go to the grocery store whenever we would have some money or whatever. And, and I remember one time that the storekeeper said something because, well, you know, gosh, you know, your kids, they don't have, you know, their clothes are kind of dirty or, or whatever, and just things like that. So mm. when you remember those things, it's like, oh my gosh. And those are feelings that you suppress for so long, right? And you can suppress them, but I'm sure they are rooted very firmly in your life experience and in your subconscious. That is so true. And it's things that I never dealt with until I was writing my book. Really, I never even thought about it, but it was so much that I didn't really trust people. I, I didn't want to get too close because mm -hmm. I was afraid that then they would turn around and hurt me like I'd been hurt right all the years of growing up. Sure. And I didn't even know how to deal with that until I was writing my book, right? So well, um, can I jump in here real quick? Please, yes, yes. Because <sighs> writing the book seems to have been powerful therapy for you. It really was. Can you tell us about that moment when that memory coming back of going into the store and buying clothes and not knowing how to do that? What's a size? What size am I? What, you know, how all of that hit you in that moment. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, when I was writing my book and I remembered that and I, I actually just, I think I just broke down because I was like, oh my gosh, you know, because not ever dealing, not remembering those things so you don't deal with it. Mm -hmm. And as I was writing my book and I thought, oh my gosh, how did we come through all this, right? And at that moment, I realized that I, at that time, during my after, I mean, I think after I got my car, I remember sitting there thinking, I never, ever want, a, if I ever have children, I will not allow that to happen. So I am not going to live the way that I had lived. And so I always had things in my mind. I always knew I wanted to do better and I was going to do better. I didn't know how, but I knew I was going to because I did not want this to ever happen to any child that I had. Or, or also I knew that if I could just make things better for myself, I could make things better for my other fam my other siblings, right? Sure. Um, you That's... know, whenever we read about heroes and, you know, Marvel has kind of warped our perception of what a hero is because they all have superheroes that have supernatural powers, but there used to be human heroes like Rocky and Wonder Woman and all of these wonderful examples. But whether we're talking about human heroes or superheroes, there always seems to be an origin story, that one moment that changed their lives was that moment sitting in your car and making that vow and that promise to yourself. Do you think That's that was great, your origin story moment? What a great question. I think that was the beginning, hmm. the beginning, because whenever, um, I, so I got married pretty young. I was, I was 20, well, 24. That's pretty young. And then we adopted a daughter and she, um, when she came along, I knew, I mean, I was doing pretty well at that point. I wasn't a real estate agent. I worked for the government at that point. Uh, mm -hmm. We were in Colorado and I was working for the Air Force and I was doing pretty well in my career. And I just thought whenever I had this little being there, right, she came to us when she was 10 months old. And mm -hmm. I thought, oh my gosh. And she had been through some really tough times because 
just being from Guatemala and she had been through some really tough times, even as a child. And so I thought I'm going to protect her. I'm going to make sure that she has what she needs, not everything that she wants, because I never wanted her to be spoiled, right? But I mm -hmm. wanted her to have mostly what she what she wanted as well. But I knew that that was going to be my, who I wanted, you know, how I was going to change my life. And um, it's interesting because whenever, whenever I had always wanted to take martial arts and that came from, I love Bruce Lee. Do you remember Bruce Lee? I absolutely remember Bruce Lee. I loved him watching him on, you know, on the movies. I was like, oh my gosh, he can take care of himself. He can protect himself. He can protect his family. And that's what I needed, right? That was something that I needed in my life. But until my daughter came around, I didn't, I never pursued that, right? And when she came, when she came along and she was three and I kept passing this martial arts school on my way to and from dropping her off at, at daycare, going to work, you know, right. And mm -hmm. one day I finally said, I am going to do it today because if I don't, I'm going to just keep where I, so I went in there and I remember this so well, <laughs> I went in there. It was, it was so intimidating, right? Because. I still don't have my confidence really well at that point, but so I went in there and there was a bunch of people in their Taekwondo uniform standing around. And I just, there was this one lady and she's just, she was, she just said, Hey, well, can I help you? And I'm like, no, that's okay. So I just grabbed the schedule and I kind of walked out and I went to my car and I thought, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I didn't know what to say, right? I didn't want to tell her my story, you know? So I actually called and talked to the head of the Taekwondo school, and I'm still in touch with him to this day. Oh. Um, Chris Natsky, he's actually, he's, uh, he's no longer in Taekwondo, he no longer is, um, has his martial arts school, but he, so in, in Taekwondo, you can have up to eight belts, black belts, right? Mm -hmm. He's at seven. He has seven. He's a seventh degree black belt. Amazing, amazing man. And he is, he, to me, he was the epitome of what I wanted to be, right? Mm -hmm. He was, he had the strength, the confidence, everything that I lacked, right? And as soon as I started taking classes, I knew that's where I belonged. And I, it took me five and a half years to get my black belt, right? Yeah. But my daughter basically grew up in the school because <laughs> we were there two or three nights every week. And cool. uh, of course, that's, you know, so then she started taking Taekwondo as well. And, and uh, she got up to her red belt, but then we moved to San Antonio. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it's interesting because up until that point, I had to have a security system in my home. I, I couldn't sleep if I didn't mm -hmm. have a security system because mm -hmm. I didn't feel safe. And after I got my black belt and I realized, you know what? I can take care of myself now and I can protect my daughter as well. That's when I didn't have to have a security system in my home, right? Now I still do, but it's because I want to. I haven't even used it in a while, but right. It's because, and, and it's kind of how you grow. It's well, sure. It sounds right? like you needed that security within yourself. You needed a system that would guarantee you're not going to just lose everything. Exactly. Maybe it wasn't for that external threat of a person robbing your home, but that existential threat that everything could be gone. Exactly. That's exactly right. I could lose everything. And then where would I be? Right. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. So I, I just believe that that moment in my car was the first time I ever made up my mind that I was not going to be a victim. Right. I, I did not want to have I, I don't know if I'd ever had that mentality, but it's like when you're kind of pushed down and you're pushed down and and you don't have a, a good um, mindset or you don't, you don't even know where you're going to, 
how you're going to make it or, or any of those things, right? I, I think yeah. you don't know what to think or say or do. And, and you have to, I do think that that was the first time I made up my mind that I was not going to be in that anymore. And it sounds like you went to a, from a place of life happening to you to a place of you were going to make the life that you wanted. Exactly. That's exactly right. You know, when you were talking about your daughter and how she inspired action within you and resolve within you, I couldn't help but think, do you have a bit of your grandma in you? Oh, <laughs> it's funny that you say that. Oh my gosh. Um, because I, I really do feel like, so everyone says that everyone that knew the family and there's no mm -hmm. knew my grandmother, they said that I have her body, right? Mm -hmm. And that, so she and I actually, I wouldn't say look alike, but I have her features, I guess you'd say. Right. And yeah. so it's funny that you mention that because if that's what everyone says, it's that I'm like my grandmother. Sounds like you have her heart and her characters and values too. She was not on her watch going to let you all go without. And oh, you made that similar promise to yourself and your daughter. Right. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> generation to generation. <laughs> I know. Right. And you know, uh, there for the longest time, Alyssa, I, I know I blamed my mother because of not having what we wanted and needed. And, and, um, I, I realized it's interesting. So my mother passed away a few years ago and before she did, uh, she passed away. I, we did, I did talk to her and tell her, you know, that we made, we made peace with everything. Mm -hmm. And I realized as I was writing the book and, and I actually have a business coach as well. And my business coach said to me not too long ago, she said, do you really think your mom wanted to live in poverty? And that hit me. I was like, oh my gosh, of course not. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I felt like I had forgiven her, but now I understand her more when, when my coach said that. That's powerful. That's a huge awareness. Right? Because I thought, oh my gosh. So I really hope, and that's what I, I really, I'm so thankful for you to have me on your podcast because there's so many people out there that I'm sure have some of the same uh, or at least similar uh, situations that I grew up in, like they, they grew up the same or, or similar and perhaps some are blaming their mom or their dad or whatever. And I'm just like, you know what, if, if your parents really did want something else, but they didn't have the, the ability, then that's what you have to realize is, I mean, most parents, 99% of the parents aren't ever going to want anything bad for their child. They, they want them to have, especially have things that they didn't have. Right. And Absolutely. so, um, that's what I, that was something else that was a realization. Wow. I mean, I, it's interesting how this book was so cathartic. I, I, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never would have known. And, and this book came about, so this is my second book. My first book was on real estate and this was my second book, but the first book was to help new real estate agents so that they can stay in the business. And then this one is like, it, it brought back. Oh, so many things because I feel like, I truly feel like I've been successful in my life because of my mindset, because I didn't continue having a mindset of poor me. Oh, you know, I'm so, I, I had such a terrible childhood, right? Mm -hmm. I tried to think, okay, how can I make things better? How can I help others? while I'm doing that as well. And, um, I mean, still to this day, so every, every dollar that I make from this, from my book, and this is, I want to show you my book. Well, not yet. Don't show it yet. I don't oh, want to. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Before so we get that, to right? that, because the name of your book is fun. Okay. And before <laughs> we get there, I want to okay. ask you another question. Please. Of, so you're in Colorado. You take Taekwondo, right. five and a half years, you get your black belt. How do you become 
a real estate agent? Because to be a real estate agent, you really have to have a lot of self-confidence. You have to go out and promote yourself as much as you promote the properties. That's you true. have to have that entrepreneurial mindset and all of those things. That is a huge jump from where you began. That's a great, another great question. So I truly feel like that I worked for the government um, because it was a safe place, mm -hmm. right? Once I was able to get in and start working and I did really well, it was a safe place. Even though at that point, I, I feel like I had always had an entrepreneurial mind mm -hmm. and I always had ideas and then I never followed up with them. And then I'd see them on TV a year later, right? With somebody else that they had brought. <laughs> <laughs> So I always had that in my mind. I uh -huh. always had these ideas and I knew I wanted to do something different, but I didn't have the courage until I moved from Denver to San Antonio and I had just finished with my black belt. Mm -hmm. And so I had that confidence, right? Mm -hmm. um, and when I moved to San Antonio, they didn't have a position for me that I could go into with the government. And so I was waiting around and waiting around to see what I could or how I could work. Cause I've never not worked since I was 16. Right. Right. And so one of my church, so I started going to church and one of my church members said, well, why don't you try real estate? And the market was really down. It was in 2007. So oh, the wow. market, right? The market had just, I mean, it had gone under for, uh, because of the mortgage industry. And mm -hmm. I was thinking, okay, well, I can try it. Right. And he said, well, I tell you what, I have two neighbors that are going to be selling their homes. Once you get your real estate license, then you let me know and I'll introduce you to them. And if they want to hire you, they can, they can, they'll hire you. And that's what I did. And wow. so my first two uh, sales in real estate were listings, which is not normal in most cases, but they went so well. I had one really great, the first client was amazing and they, they were so good and just, and it's interesting because it was almost like I knew what to do, even though I had no, right. It was so interesting. Cause I was like, I, I think it was just the, Maybe it was my grandmother, you know, my, the, all of that <laughs> because uh -huh. of her teachings and her love and her, her support. Uh -huh. Um, and she, she couldn't change a lot of things, but I always knew that she loved me. And, um, that was, that was, I, I think that's really where that came from is, is because I knew I just needed to help these people to, cause they wanted to move, move on and move out of state and. I needed to make sure that I did everything I could. So I learned as much as I could too during that time frame, so that I could make sure that they had a great experience. And, uh, so that's kind of how I started my, in real estate. And, um, it was, it was so interesting because it took me three years to actually start making some really good money. But my first year I actually sold 15 houses. Wow. Right. That's so amazing. I, I yeah. was like, yay. <laughs> Perhaps you have an ability here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Real estate, it's, it's been great. It's been so, so good. But it did take me three years to actually get to six figures. Mm -hmm. um, but still, three years is great. Um, did you hear what you just said? That, that six figures, what is it like to say that about yourself now? Oh. It's amazing. So for the last 12 years, I have been in making six figures and what it has allowed me to do is, is help my family members. I also have started a program at one of the, the um, one of the schools here in town. It's actually one of the uh, school systems, school districts. And they, I, I started working with one of the counselors and in one of the schools, amazing. She was, she's been so great. And so what we, what I do is I provide money to them. She actually goes and she shops for the kids. She, we bought backpacks for them. 
And so every Thursday, the kids come in that and there's there during the pandemic, it was crazy how many kids needed that, right? We went from sure. about 18 families to 76 families wow. needed help. But so what we do is, so I provide the money and on Thursdays, the, um, the kids come to the counselor. They, she has all the, all the food and everything. They pack their own backpacks. They get to take that backpack home with them. If they have siblings, we put extra food in there for them, right? For their siblings. And they get to take that home and they bring for the weekend so that they'll have food when they're home. And then on Monday or Tuesday, when they bring the backpack, back to school, then the process starts again. So it has allowed me to help with that. And it's so good because I, I just thought I've got to help somehow. And I just kept, honestly, it took me, I, I know it's crazy. It took me a couple of years. I, I kept getting this prompting, prompting mm -hmm. to do something. Right. And I finally, I'm like, okay, Lord, <laughs> I'm going to do it. Yes. So I went to the school. I was scared to death. Here I am, an adult, and I'm like, I'm scared to death to go and say, um, I'd like to do this, but I'm not sure what to do. I'm sure they scooped you right up. <laughs> they did. They're like, oh, yes. Okay, we can help you. <laughs> Donna, what does it feel like for you to call yourself a philanthropist? I've, I don't, I've never thought of myself as that. Uh, ever. I, wow, gosh, you just threw something at me, Melissa. <laughs> like, I never well, thought of myself. That's like what that. you are oh, from where gosh. you began. And now you're a philanthropist. Oh my gosh. I never thought about it like that. Thank you. Wow. Wow. So I think now's the perfect time to tell us the title of your book. <laughs> Okay. I had some people that said, okay, you may have, might offend some people. And I'm like, you know what? This is so, I love this title. So I had my videographer help me to create this cover and I love this. So this is my cover, right? Tell us what it says. It says developing your kick-ass mindset. And on okay. the front, it Hang has, on. It's, if oh, you're sorry. watching, if you're listening to the podcast, Make sure you hop over to YouTube and catch the video to see this, this beaming smile on Donna's face as she shares this book cover. It is amazing. And the book cover is really cool. All right, Della, describe Thank the book cover to us. <laughs> Thank you so much, Melissa. So the book cover is a Taekwondo uniform and it has a black belt wrapped around it. And on the back, that's me getting my, my black belt. <laughs> And that's oh. Mr. Natsky that we discussed earlier. Um, that's, uh, <clears throat> that's, he is a seventh degree black belt right now, but he and his team were amazing and they helped me to, to just grow and develop. And so it's interesting because his story, he came from where his father was uh, beating his mother mm -hmm. and he got into martial arts so that he would not use that like because I, I guess a lot of a lot of children when they see that they develop that or they use that in their marriage absolutely right? those yes those traits are passed on until they're healed they are passed on right so learning his story and knowing where i came from it was just it was a perfect fit and i thought if he can do this i know i can do this right and donna if you can do this so can the person listening to this podcast. Exactly. I agree. I so agree. And that's honestly, Melissa, I, that's why I'm so excited about this book because I know if a person will just read the book and apply the principles that are in it, I know mm -hmm. that they can get to where they want to be. Right. Because sure. if I can do it, anybody can do it. Well, and it was that relationship with him that really changed you. And you also develop relationships with people. Do you have more than a book to offer? Oh, oh my gosh, I do. And you know, I wanted to do this just for your, your listeners too. I just developed a mini course last week 
to go along with wow. the book. I just finished it. I was like, I've got to do this before I get on Melissa's podcast <laughs> because I wanted to make sure your listeners would have this. And I love this mini course. It is so, to me, it's really, really powerful. It will help them. It, the book, I think, is really, really great. But I, the, the mini course will help them, anyone, to develop their mindset even more so because there's some questions that are really, really deep in this mm -hmm. mini course. Yeah. That if they sit there and they just ponder it, they're going to help themselves to work through anything, anything. So those who listen to your, or who read the book, who follow those directions, they might have their own origin story. Is that what you're oh, saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. I and I just feel like they will be able to do anything that they set their minds to it. They will be able to work through everything that they have dealt with and get through it just like I did. Donna, you are a treasure. Uh, to get the book, the link will be in the show notes. Just click on that link. It'll take you right to the book. Don't miss the mini course. Click that link. It's in the show notes as well. And partner with Donna and become a philanthropist in your own life, just like Donna has. She started with less than nothing. And now look at her, a philanthropist to, to so many. Donna, thank you so much for being on this podcast today. Melissa, you just made my day. Oh my gosh, you're such a warm, wonderful person. Thank you so much. I'm going to give you the last thought today. Is there one last thought you would like to share with folks? Oh gosh. You know what? Don't let life get you down. Don't do not allow anything to get you down. Life is too short. And you, I promise you, you can do anything you want to do. You just need the right mindset. So get your kick-ass mindset. You heard it here first. All right. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, my dear. Have a great day.